This is Five on Your Side at noon, focused on you. We begin today at noon with new details about a report accusing local municipal courts of putting people in jail for traffic tickets and other minor infractions. Thanks for being here at noon. I'm Kay Quinn. Five on Your Side was the first station to obtain this report. The 30-page document from Arch City Defenders lays out what's changed in the last decade throughout St. Louis County's court systems. Our Mercedes McKay has more on what it says. The changes started in Ferguson following the death of Michael Brown in 2014. After the Justice Department investigated Brown's death, it accused the city of Ferguson of racially biased policing and using excessive fines and court fees, which led to sweeping court reforms. Around the same time, our city defenders released a white paper similar to the one we have today, outlining abuse within the municipal courts, calling them debtors prisons. Now, the group claimed municipalities across St. Louis County were putting people in jail because they couldn't pay for things like traffic tickets. And this wasn't just happening in Ferguson. Since 2015, our city defenders filed seven federal class action debtors prison lawsuits against Jennings, Ferguson, St. Anne, Normandy, Edmondson, Maplewood, and Florissant. But it goes even beyond that. The group filed 52 lawsuits between 2014 to 2024, alleging unlawful practices in 20 municipalities spanning across eight counties. Just to show you the impact the sweeping reforms have made, municipal court revenue in Ferguson declined by 95.2% from 2014 to 2023. Five on Your Side sat down with Arch City Defenders Executive Director Blake Strode ahead of the white paper release. He talked about their client's strength and heart-wrenching stories. We've had clients that have missed, you know, funerals of their parents, clients who have had kids sent out of state because they were sitting in jail, clients who families had to scrape together all the money they could find just to get them out of jail. I mean, really harrowing experiences and and somehow they found the strength not only to then take that system on, but then to stick with it over the years. Arch City Defenders has collected more than $25 million in damages for people across the region. For more in-depth look at this report, head now to KSDK.com and look under the Tissel tab. In Ferguson, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. The strike is over at the Lear Seating Assembly Plant in Wentzville. The workers ended their strike this morning, four days after walking off the job over health and safety fears. The union says it's reached a tentative deal with Lear. There's been no official word of terms. Lear makes seats for several automakers, including General Motors. The GM plant in Wentzville had to shut down during the strike. A child is dead, killed in this multi-vehicle crash on Interstate 70 in St. Louis. This was the scene this morning at Salisbury. Here's what we know. A child between the age of three and five died after being taken to a hospital. Police say he was not in a car seat. They say debris from a semi fell into the express lanes and caused the accident. Police shut down the interstate for several hours after that crash. A hit and run leaves a person dead in South St. Louis. Officers arrived on the scene last night at Belle Reve in Minnesota and found the victim in the road. They say the driver of the car who hit that person took off. The name of the person who died has not been released. I'm Travis Cummings reporting in the Central West End. We're here at the Cathedral Basilica, which is a pillar for the St. Louis Archdiocese. Right now, the religious organization is facing child sexual abuse allegations in several area cities. That includes St. Louis, St. Charles, Ferguson, also Webster Groves. The lawsuit filed in St. Louis Circuit Court on Wednesday is pretty lengthy, 74 pages long, and our team has been combing through it for the last 12 hours. 25 men and women, all identified by their initials, are blaming the church for enabling and covering up child sex abuse by priests, nuns, and employees for decades. The defendants in the case include the St. Louis Archdiocese and Archbishop Mitchell Rosansky. The lawsuit accuses the Archdiocese of regularly transferring employees who commit abuse to different locations or sending them away for treatment, quote, before returning them to unsupervised access to children. The allegations span all across the St. Louis region at 33 area churches, schools and hospitals, including the ones you see on this list. That's Immaculate Heart of Mary, St. Agnes, St. Pius V and St. Gabriel the Archangel, all in St. Louis City. Also St. Thomas the Apostle, Florissant, St. Joseph Hospital in St. Charles, St. Bernadette in Lime and Immaculate Conception in Union. This afternoon, the 25 men and women are demanding a jury trial. 
Reporting in the Central West End, Travis Cummings, five on your side. Christopher Dunn is still in jail today, even after a judge overturned his conviction. The Missouri Supreme Court is siding with an appeal from the state's attorney general to keep him in prison because the circuit court held the hearing with less than one hour's notice to the state. Dunn has been in prison for more than three decades after being convicted of killing a 15-year-old boy in North St. Louis in 1990. He's always maintained he didn't do it. The Department of Corrections tells us the earliest Dunn could be released is Monday. We're also continuing to follow a massive search south of St. Louis. Excavators are digging at a property in Bollinger County. The property owner says the FBI asked to search his land for possible remains. No agency has confirmed exactly which case that search is connected to, but it's happening just miles away from where 13-year-old Gina Dawn Brooks disappeared in 1989. Three men have been implicated but were never convicted due to lack of evidence. The Missouri State Highway Patrol says they'll update us as soon as officials have more information. New today, the mayor of Alton offering an update on this giant sinkhole that collapsed at Gordon Moore Park last month. Mayor David Goins says drilling has been underway and crews are continuing to make progress. He says a team of experts is now reviewing the work and discussing plans to reopen the park. There is still no timeline for that. Alrighty, everyone. So our weather outside today, you're going to notice it's going to be more humid. We're also seeing a bit of that cloud growth out there. So we have these clouds. These are just cumulus clouds, but as the day progresses, they're going to come into contact with more moisture and a little bit more heat, and they're going to start to grow. That's going to fire off the possibility for a few storms. 87 degrees, and gosh, we just know that humidity doesn't feel so good out there, does it? It feels like 93. It's going to be pretty sticky today with that humidity just under 60%. Winds are light as well, so we're not going to get much relief from that either. Through the rest of our day today, we will make it into the upper 80s. We have those chances for storms. You're going to see those developing on the horizon, so you're going to know they're heading your way without even looking at a radar app or checking in with us. Once you do have those darkened clouds over you, then it's time to check in with us in your radar app to see what's coming your way. Uh, but you will definitely see those before it comes your, your direction. Like yesterday, for example, at dinner, I was looking off to our east from St. Louis, and you could very clearly tell who was under the thunderstorms and who wasn't. Same story today. For tonight, little possibility for some patchy fog. We're going to drop down into the upper 60s. All right, thank you, Tracy. Still ahead, CrowdStrike offers an update on what caused Friday's tech outage. Plus, the record number of tickets sold for the Olympics and why there's still many more available.